only way we can do it is through native formats and in native we have found you know we have been able to do infographics which are advertiser driven so we will tell the uh, we will tell the user that this is a sponsored content but it would be an infographics which is actually leading to either brand building or it could lead to uh, walk-ins it could lead to leads or it could lead to actual acquisitions okay. we have been quite uh, successful in doing most of these things okay thank you shrini uh, thanks, thanks shrini yeah. impressive to hear you know direct sales significant contribution all of us are struggling with direct sales mm. so anyway i just want to get into that right now i don't want you know i've noticed the tonality of this uh, dg pub event is going in a very publisher cribbing mode you know we are we have our <laughs> challenges but uh, you know i think it's common to all of us and uh, uh, some of it up some of us have been doing this for a few years now and uh, you know it, we 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 still chasing that the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow but it's it's just getting more complicated so i think that some of that tonality is coming out in some of the sessions but uh, on the flip side we definitely are in a, in a really really good place a lot of dollars are moving to digital i'm part of a television network a legacy news television network which is you know leader in the space been making a lot of money on uh, on television for many years now a lot of that sales teams comes back and tells their managers the tv sales guys come and say you know you know we're not getting this client on he's moved 95% of his money to digital straight away in the room the eyes on me ke dude are you getting any of that so my answer is also you know not yet it's it's heading this way but it's definitely not coming on the banner model so you know a lot of us have collectively understood that the banner model is broken and uh, success will come through new ad formats native uh, mm. Yeah, you know, and we'll, uh, selling influence. I'll speak a little bit about that yeah. you know, as we speak. We'll get to native in a bit because that's another can of worms. But you know, I want to bring something up while we're on the subject of the banner. Last year, uh, one of our panelists, Siddharth of Ogilvy, he said something really interesting. He said the banner didn't fail us; we failed the banner. So, uh, what's your reaction to that? I mean, where are we at again? One year hence. So I totally agree with that. Actually, we collectively sat down and broke that banner model. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's an issue with the yield. It's an issue with just the you know just the way that model was structured. We were all very happy, you know, publishing banners on our uh, you know websites. We would get a mysterious check from Google at the end of the month. You know, said oh, well done, so many banners burnt. Here, take some money, and then we built on that. Then the model just evolved that. you publish more pages burn more banners make more money mm. but that's kind of falling apart right now so like uh, you know we we we've just been discussing we're all digressing towards uh, mm. native branded content uh, and some additional opportunities okay okay now at the risk of creating some fiction uh, friction over here i'm going to ask uh, the panel something that you know unlike print in digital in web publishing the onus to innovate uh, on the ad formats front lies entirely with the publisher right so let's start with uh, whether that's even fair and uh, speaking of grouses you know this is a big grouse yeah. so we've got a lot of publishers in the panel and rubina you represent the digital agency side so i'd like you to respond to it No, um i'm sorry um yeah. i i don't think there's any question of fair it's a question of survival mm. so if uh, when we understood more and more that you know just depending on uh, the googles and the tabulas of the world and probably depending on ad agencies to put their uh, with all due respect to put their uh, you know uh, codes on our site we are literally not getting any we are neither we are neither getting the money nor are we getting the data uh, and definitely we are not able to influence any of that decision making ourselves so the only way to go about it is to actually try and bypass all of this and get to the client and start selling the age old way that we always used to sell for print also we needed to go directly to the client for tv alone it became the agency model for digital again we have to go back to our roots we need to go back to our client we need to find the client's problem and we need to see if there's any way that we can solve that problem through our uh, you know either website or social i mean there's so much of uh, there's video driving through facebook and youtube um, which is also again native content mm. so it's native content is not necessarily just print mm. it is a it is a whole gamut of activity that can be done if you if you are available on those platforms and if you built an audience i guess you can do it okay what about you ramakrishnan uh, shonil before rubina sort of uh, jumps in on whom does the onus to innovate really lie like um, what do you think it's all about, it's all about survival i mean i mean we can't just be sitting and cribbing ki nothing's happening so i think one of the insights uh, from the earlier panel also was that uh, there aren't enough uh, indian language advertising so i guess one of the areas which we could possibly look at or innovating is how do we you know 
push the advertisers either into doing uh, Indian language advertising or uh, we as a publisher help them do it. Uh, so we operate only in the Indian language space. We've got uh, five Indian languages. I guess that is one area which where we could possibly look at. Okay. Okay. And uh, Shunil, what about you? So, you know, we, we're all talking about uh, branded content and native venue, uh, that being the holy grail, which is you know, coming around the corner. But very difficult to scale. Mm. And if you actually break it down, you know, we anyway have a tough enough job running a publishing business. We are pretty much becoming an agency. When you do, you know, branded content, mm. you're, you're nothing, you're just becoming an extension of, you know, the client's agency requirements. So that's why it's a little challenging. We're seeing money going in that direction. So a lot of us are chasing it, but um, it's complicated. Uh, you know, to your question yeah. on, on owners, uh, I think it's a collective owners. It's a, it's, it's, uh, it's something which, uh, you know, we uh, formats per se have to be homogeneous, work across multiple, multiple publishers. Essentially, the platforms mm. can, you know, so that you can get into the demand which is available. So, you know, no one's really succeeded with, uh, uh, you know, great. Uh, innovations and in, in ad formats other than a lot of us spent uh, four or five years monetizing home page takeovers everyone had different ways of <laughs> delivering that and mm. that was good money you sell 300 of, 300 of them in a year uh, but with this shift to mobile that entire exactly. opportunity has died so you know that's another you know uh, situation which uh, which we're all in yeah but yeah it's a collective onus I yeah would say. okay we'll get to the mobile bit uh, yeah. as well but uh, rubina who who has to innovate now who can save the day <laughs> <laughs> so i think um you know, um, it is a joint responsibility if you have to get wonderful results. Yeah. The fact is that it's not that the agencies and clients don't want to um, innovate. In fact, um, the f fact is that uh, they understand, yeah. the client understands their product the best and therefore their problem statement and what is the solution they're looking for. The agencies understand what are the solutions which are available in the market and are able to stitch it together very well for clients. Uh, however, the fact of the matter is that if you're the owner of your own product, you understand your product the best, right? The publisher understands their product the best and knows what works on their uh, um, you know, particular product and will not work on, let's say, another publisher. So I think it's, it's really required that the first, um, you know, when they get a brief, mm. they come back and they, they tell us that what is possible mm. and what is not possible. At times, you know, um, and to give you a specific case, you know, iProspect works with Amphi on a large uh, scale and most people in this room may have seen that campaign. Mm. Um, we work jointly together with a, a number of publishers mm. in curating the idea. They're the first brief went from them. I have it. I have to give it to the publishers. They came back with the first idea, but eventually, what uh, went live was a curation of what the client was looking for, what the agency's input was, and what yeah. the what the publisher had to go back and also change at their end, yeah. and then come back and say that this is good. this is the way it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, does it happen on all campaigns? Maybe not. But should 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 we do more of it? Yes, I agree. We should definitely do more and more of it mm. together. Okay. So going forward, you know, uh, the, the trouble with saying it, the, the onus is on everybody means it's a nobody, right? So if you have to just flag someone and say it's your neck, uh, going forward, who should be uh, most responsible or most cognizant of uh, innovation in the, on the ad format front? So, like I said, um, you know, it depends. So it's really that, you know, eventually it's your own platform, right? Uh, an agency or a client can come back with an idea and say, I want this. Now, um, the practical problem is many times, many publishers will say, no, it's not possible, right? Um, so it's the same brief that goes to 10 publishers. Maybe two will come back and say that, okay, yes, we are willing to take it on and do it, right? Well, um, you know, you could say the onus lies on this side, but then who's going to implement it eventually? The person who's the owner of that whole business or product it has to be eventually responsible for the innovation happening there, right? While the ideas can come in from the industry, the, you know, the push can come in from the industry, mm -hmm. but eventually whether you want to do it, whether it fits into your business model, it doesn't fit into your business model, whether you want to do it, don't want to do it, it really depends on uh, eventually who is the owner of that platform. Mm. Okay, okay. Shonil, same question. Talk to us, Rubina. We'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And th there's also been there's also been uh, times when we have actually created an innovative solution for a, yeah. for a client, yeah. and he has found it working so well with us. He has taken it to other publishers, right? So, and I'm not going to fight with him because I need his business too. But uh, he needs to grow his business too. Okay, okay. And now as readership moves to mobile, let's talk a little bit about what kind of ad formats will really work on the mobile platform specifically and what kind of tech support we'll need to make that a reality. Because so far it's all about maybe the site capture, 
you go on the mobile and it's site capture, right? Because site panels disappear. Many, many formats which work on the web don't work on mobile. So what formats will work there? I think the value level which is coming on mobile and you know all of us are seeing our traffic move there is essentially the data. It's not so much the format presently. Okay, okay. it's still banner. It's still pre-roll. Hmm. Uh, it's uh, it's you know the the amount of uh, real-time data which is available, which is actually making the differentiator on you know in, in terms of what yields etc. People are seeing. I think okay. that's more. You know we've we've not unthought the banner yet. It's, we're still very, very okay. dependent on it. A lot of us have started making it, uh, you know, it's, it's the more bread and butter layer mm. and the, the premium revenues, etc., are coming from brand content and, you know, uh, alliances and partnerships and syndication. A lot of us are moving in that direction. Mm. But yeah, the banner piece is, is complex. And right now, I think we're at a, you know, at a brick wall right now with, the, you know, this transition to mobile mm. and how this is going to play out. Okay. Okay. Now speaking, of, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, also your earlier point, um, it's not about innovation for the sake of innovation. Mm. I mean, finally, we need to publish also needs to make money. But some of the newer ad formats which are working now globally are, uh, you have augmented reality ads, 360 degree ads. But finally, if the advertiser is going to come to the publisher and say, I'm, you know, I'm just going to give you 10 cents for it. I mean, it doesn't, finally, it leads to that. Mm. I mean, innovation, innovation is... I mean, it's something new, it's a, it's a new toy for the first few months, but after that, it's, you know, back to square one. Okay. So that's the real problem, at least from a publisher perspective. Hmm. Sure. I mean, the, finally, the real innovation will happen from the advertiser, from the advertiser's perspective. Publishers can do their bit, but finally, it's all of the pricing and how much is the advertiser willing to pay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about one more uh, elephant in the room. Okay. We've got ad blockers. Ad avoidance has increased so much now. So one obvious in one statement, yes, that's going to reduce the insertions of ads and uh, it's going to increase branded content and native. But let's take it a little further. What can publishers do to really gear up and what's the antidote to the ad blocker? You know, again, I'm, I'm coming back to the, yeah. you know, my, my, my early answer. We are all trying to reduce our dependency on the banner. Hmm. You know, this whole, you know, ecosystem became complex and, you know, instead of cleaning up and becoming better, uh, you know, with better yields, video also didn't take off the way we did. So, you know, we are reducing, trying our level best to make that just the bread and butter layer, hmm. keep doing that to some extent. But really, the, the icing and the cream on the cake is coming from, you know, the non-banner piece. Okay. So, uh, I think most news, most news orgs and publisher organizations are all sitting down in their revenue meetings telling their sales teams that, you know, guys, I'll unthink, you know, your CPM banner sales model, go out, try and find the client's problems, offer solutions, things like that. But yeah, at a business level, uh, you know, we struggle with the opportunity to scale these. You know, this is, this is good mm. for now because okay. clients are willing to pay a premium, but uh, scalability will be an issue sometime down the line. Okay. But from my perspective, I've been doing banner sales mm -hmm. for the last seven, eight years. Mm. I think at a, you know, at a broad publisher level, we believe that, you know, just trying to monetize banners will not pay our editors, like Sandeep said in the earlier mm. line. Okay. Shini, what about you? Ad blockers, do they change a publisher's life too much? Clearly, it sounds like it's anyway going in, that, that in one direction and ad blockers are just... Yeah, I mean, uh, it. Yeah. definitely the banner ad is under a lot of stress. Yeah. There's no two opinions about it. Uh, but I, I have to I have to say that if there is relevance of the material to the content consumer, hmm. generally blocking actually does not happen. So if there is hmm. if there is more relevance, I think uh, ad blocking is you know it's again a two way two way game. It's also the user who does hmm. not want to see certain kind of ads. Hmm. If you are able to find that sweet spot of relevance, I I believe even that can be avoided to the max okay. and again native i think again only solution yeah otherwise. native deserves an entire panel because that's a can of worms and you know yeah, I, it completely I completely second that because um, you know um, i think what has happened on digital is that unlike television or print you know you television you're watching something you're watching linear tv you have to watch the ad and then move on to the next thing uh, digital gives the power in the hand of the consumer first time where mm. you can like go away now if uh, and when I was on the other side, I'm party to the game as well. Mm -hmm. You know, as publishers, most people kind of overuse that inventory and create that experience which is highly, um, uh, you know, disruptive mm -hmm. uh, to a user. 
However, having said that, there are a lot of stats which are available that users actually on digital do not mind ads if they're personalized and customized. Okay. Right? Again, going back to my point of data. So even if it's a banner, and think about it, anybody in the room, let's say, um, you know, if I'm looking for a particular product or service, and there is a banner which kind of targets me sharply, uh, telling me that, you know, this is available like this, it makes my life easier. It's not that I hate the banner. The mm. fact is that, um, you know, if we try to apply the offline way of advertising, which is mass communication mm. to everybody in this room, uh, it's not going to work. But each uh, person in this room has uh, different preferences and sets. So if you're able to build cohorts, build segments, and say that, okay, for this set of people, this banner is going to work, while for this set of people, another banner is work, I'm quite sure it'll, people will not use ad blockers as much. Mm. The problem is currently we are just trying to do mass communication, and a lot of stuff that is coming to me is extremely relevant as that. That's why as a consumer, I want to block it. Okay. Okay, yeah. Now, uh, very quickly, before we go to the audience for questions, uh, top three formats of the future. Native, yes, of course. Top three formats of the future. Sorry, what are the... Top three ad formats of the future. I think, I mean, futuristically, you'll see a lot of these AR, VR um, ads coming up. I think uh, those are obviously innovative and uh, at least from an advertiser's perspective. From a publisher's perspective, uh, I think... As of now, from whatever we've seen as a television company, it's mainly pre-rolls and mid-rolls which work well. Okay. So I think that will continue to be there. That's fair. We are, we are pre-roll, mid -roll. So for me, uh, video, uh, voice and language. I think three trends uh, which are going to be very big. We think it's something in the future, but if we talk of voice, currently we don't have solutions where we have content coming back in voice, but if you look at the data and the queries that are mm. happening, um, you know, there, uh, there are a lot of queries. And in India, India is the second largest uh, market which used, uses Google, Google Translate, mm. right? So a lot of stuff happening on languages and voice as we speak. Thanks. So I think two big trends to watch, well, except for video. And my urge to every publisher in this room is also, when you look at video, don't look at it as just pre-roll, mid-roll. Um, and, you know, there's not always the need to innovate and do something. But let's say that a larger platform which are bringing something to the industry, making it widely acceptable uh, to agencies, to clients. Sometimes you just have to follow suit, you know, mm. and then there is a lot of money to make on that. Mm. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, will, I will just give a small contrarian perspective to this mm. whole thing, uh, is that I think one of the problems we are facing with agencies as publishers is that, uh, I'll just give you a small example. Uh, we, we, uh, we have TV programs uh, uh, that we produce which are also carried on YouTube. So I have on one of my, uh, one of our bigger shows, we have one and a half million views happening on YouTube every day on that particular show, uh, which is actually, come to think of it, it's just a TV audience who has decided not to watch that program on TV, but decided to watch it on YouTube. So we've been trying to sell this to clients and agencies saying that you're taking my TV spot. Why don't you just add on another spot here? Mm. Or I can even give you a, I can give you a brand placement in this and then you can actually mm. double up your uh, communication. But somehow that's not reaching. So somewhere if the, if the efficiency of video is understood completely, I think it can really, you know, change the game. Okay. Shonil, top three ad formats of tomorrow. So, you know, even I bet my dollar on uh, video and voice and that's p probably, you know, the direction in which a lot of the money will move and is moving. But I just want to kind of talk about one case study which has worked for us and, you know, we, we're trying to replicate that across the board. Uh, you, you guys, uh, you know, as publishers don't only have, you know, high quality audiences, etc. You exert a lot of influence by what you, the content which you put out, you know, say it could be in the political circles, it could be in the commercial circles. So there is a need gap where there's a some, you know, certain set of advertisers which is looking at leveraging the influence which you have as a publisher, like we as Times now have, or you know, any publisher in a particular state or etc. So a good example, and you know, you guys can take this back and you know, think about how you guys can incorporate it into your business. Is this client you guys would have seen all these ads for this country called Gabon? Okay, it's been, they've been running on our channels and they're on our websites, etc. Unheard of advertiser. In fact, even I had to look up Gabon and the Africa map to figure out where it is. Multi, multi-million dollar deal. Okay, now these deals don't come on banners and they don't come on, uh, on uh, uh, you know, uh, 
TV spots. These are conversations which you have to have where you actually are able to leverage the influence you have locally and deliver the, you know, through that the objectives what the clients want, which in the case of Gabon was to raise funds here for, uh, you know, development and uh, infrastructure and SEZs in his country. So, you know, uh, that's where I think some of us should shift some of our focus. Sales teams should look at these opportunities and try and figure out how to kind of go beyond just the traditional, you know, FCT slash uh, banner business which you're around and, th and there is some significant amount of revenue to be grabbed there for premium publishers who okay. have valuable audiences and uh, can exert influence. Okay. okay, great. At this point, I'd like to uh, open up the panel to audience questions. We have one hand there. Hi, uh, I am Azim. Um, I'm just ext extending myself to the panel basically. Uh, we spoke about uh, a lot of ad formats and all. Uh, we didn't speak about the creativity, right? So I think that there was a, a phrase called content is king and distribution is queen. I would like to rephrase that with this panel wherein I feel content is king, data is God like Rubina uh, said, creativity is goddess, data. distribution is queen, tech is prince and personalization is princess, right? So this sums up uh, the entire panel. So I think it's, it's responsibility of all of us uh, wherein we, we understand uh, the brand's requirement and work together to give him solution which is the best. It can be a banner, it can be brand solution, it can be creativity, uh, it can be through personalizations. Like one of the example is that if I'm planning a travel uh, to say a, a European country, uh, the the content which I will get, I will see through an ad. I'm uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Is there a yeah. question actually? So I'm I'm just wanting to add up yeah. that it's it's connecting to all of these and basically okay. we need to have a joint uh, you know kind of thing. Okay. Thank Any you. questions for the panelists? Yeah. Hi guys, uh, Ruman Agarwal from Accio.ai. We actually monetize content, visual content, by understanding the context of images and videos. So my general question to the panel is that we've been talking a lot about generic banners being served and targeting people using DMP data to figure out, you know, who are they and you know, what are they doing. But have you guys actually uh, tried to serve ads by figuring out what are people actually seeing? I mean, trying to figure out the context of an image or video and then doing some, you know, innovation around that. Okay. Video that's that's big now. Or even images, big. even images. In print. Uh, digital. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah, digital. Ob I mean, definitely uh, contextual. Um, uh, I mean, content. I mean, um, advertising based on the past uh, history of that consumer with us, as well as what he is consuming now. Right. Yes. Specifically absolutely. to what he's consuming now. Yes. Any, yes. And what, are, what are the experiences? If you can share any experiences. Well, definitely the click-through rate has certainly gone up, and we've definitely been able to generate leads for our clients. We've been even able to convert business for our clients. Uh, there's no two opinions about it. If you do it right, if you you need to have a team which is looking into the DMP data, you can you can get it right. Okay. Thanks. There were two more hands, and that's it. Just two questions. One and two. Hi, I'm uh, Shravan from United. So uh, my question is uh, this, if uh, you were to say banner business is dying, then newspapers would have died long back. The difference between a newspaper and a website is the website has the banners in the same place every single time I visit. The newspapers mix it up. What are you guys doing about that? I like to be surprised by what I see rather than see it in the same place every single time. So okay, the old school of thought regarding placement was, you know, we had all this tech available to us, right? Heat maps and how the guy goes through the site and where the banner performs and, you know, over time, the banners are in the position where they are right now to deliver highest clicks. Okay, we've all built our models basis, you know, what delivers higher clicks. So I think, you know, it's just a legacy issue. If you're customizing it for a, a create for a user, why not customize placements for a user? So you know, the, the, the mobile, uh, you know, s screen size has killed this completely. You know, when we had a desktop, we had, you know, you could move it from left to right and, you know, push it somewhere down the page and all. Now, while this guy is scrolling up with his thumb, the banner size remains static. There's no place to put it. You could put it at the back of his phone. I have no, I don't have an answer for that. Okay. <laughs>